let's see if we can extract some more information about the utility of these coefficients and where they come into play. Now, I'm, we're going to go back in time to an identity which has been known to practically every one of the major ancient civilizations. This is the binomial theorem. So let's start with two numbers, p and q. We're going to sum them, and we're going to raise them to a power. So p plus q to the power 0 is, by definition, 1. Anything to the power 0 is 1. p plus q to the power 1, of course, is just trite. It's just p plus q. p plus q to the power 2 is the first non-trivial case. And this is the first major algebraic identity you saw in elementary school. p plus q, the whole squared, is p squared plus twice pq plus q squared. Very familiar, very comforting. What about p plus q, the whole cubed? Well, this perhaps is a little less familiar in your memory banks, but if you scratch around long enough, you've realized, oh yes, it is p cubed plus 3p squared q plus 3pq squared plus q cubed. And if you were persistent enough, you could resurrect the identity for p plus q to the power 4 that you might have seen once or twice in your early school years. All right. This is nice. We're beginning to see that the expansion of p plus q to a power is something like a polynomial in terms of powers of p and q. Can you come up with a generic abstract statement for what a power of a sum is going to look like? This, of course, is the content of the binomial theorem. This was known in antiquity, and the binomial theorem at its heart turns out to be the key element in Newton's discovery of the calculus. So this is a very powerful and important historically result involving the, the binomial coefficients. Now the observation is the following. We can write 1 as 0 to 0, which by definition you recall is 1, times p to the power 0 times q to the power 0 p plus q to the power 1 is p plus q, and we can write that as a sum of two binomial terms, one involving 1 choose 1, one involving 1 choose 0, as you can verify by just plugging into the formula. p plus q to the power 2. Now that's given by another binomial expansion, 2 choose 2 times p to the power 2 times q to the power 0, plus 2 choose 1 times p to the power 1 times q to the power 1, plus 2 choose 0 times p to the power 0 times q to the power 2. And you could do something similar for each of the expansions on the screen. And now a general pattern is becoming visible. And this is the content of the binomial theorem. The nth power of a sum p plus q can be written as an expansion involving the binomial coefficients starting with n choose n, and running all the way down to n choose 0. To each binomial coefficient, you'll attach a power of p and a power of q. And the key property is that the powers of p and the powers of q must add to n. And so you have an expansion starting with p to the power n and ending up at q to the power n. This is the binomial theorem of antiquity, and it continues to be deeply relevant and important in analysis in the modern day.